I'm Glenn Greenwald of The Intercept speaking to you from Brazil, where a very serious, fascinating, dramatic, and highly evolving scandal is all but drowning the first month of the new presidency of Brazil's Jair Bolsonaro. And since this scandal, which affects several members of his family and his closest aides, is complex and has evolved very rapidly, we thought it would be very valuable to take a bird's eye view, a step back, and explain the key components of the scandal and how it has evolved. The key figure in this scandal is Jair Bolsonaro's son, his eldest son, Flavio. President Bolsonaro has three sons who are in elected office. Eduardo, who was just elected to the Congress, re-elected with the largest vote in the history of the country. Another son, Carlos, who is a member of the Rio de Janeiro City Council and the spokesman of the family. And then his eldest son, Flavio, who has spent the last decade as a state representative in the state of Rio de Janeiro and just got elected to the federal Senate with the largest vote in the state of Rio de Janeiro. And he is the key figure in this corruption scandal. It began back in December after Bolsonaro's victory, but before he was inaugurated, when an anti-corruption unit of the federal police discovered some highly suspicious movements of money into and out of the account of someone named Fabricio Queiroz. Fabricio is one of the longest and closest friends of Jair Bolsonaro. He is a former police officer. And most importantly, he has spent the last 10 years as the driver and security person for Flavio Bolsonaro during the time that he was in the state house. And these movements of money were so suspicious for so many reasons, including the fact that Fabricio earned a relatively low salary as Flavio Bolsonaro's driver and through his pension as an ex-police officer. And yet the movements of money were in amounts far greater than his entire salary, which naturally led to the question of how could such a close friend of Jair Bolsonaro and key aide of Flavio Bolsonaro be moving so much money far greater than his salary. As the investigation unfolded, the questions only deepened. First, it was discovered that, in fact, far more money than was originally known was discovered to have been moving in and out of the account of Fabricio up to 7 million reais, which is around 2 million US dollars. The scandal grew even further when it turned out that at least one of the deposits made by Fabricio with cash was made to the account of Jair Bolsonaro's wife, Michelle Bolsonaro, something that was very difficult to understand. As the amounts of money became greater and the suspicious nature of the movements increased, including discovering that at times very rapid small deposits were made into Flavio Bolsonaro's account at times 10 or 15 deposits within three minutes, the hallmark of how you launder money or try and evade banking and federal financial regulations. Both Fabricio and Flavio Bolsonaro began trying to evade the investigation. On two separate occasions, Fabricio, the longtime friend of President Jair Bolsonaro and the 10-year driver of Flavio Bolsonaro, made an appointment to respond to questions from investigators only to not show up, claiming that he had medical problems that required hospitalization. And yet suddenly it turned out that a video emerged of him in a hospital in Sao Paulo, one of the most expensive private hospitals in the country, where he was dancing with his family, obviously calling into question the authenticity of the medical problems that prevented him from responding to investigators. <laughs> Instead of responding to investigators, Fabricio decided to do an interview with Hecorge TV, which is the far right pro Bolsonaro media outlet owned by an evangelical billionaire who was highly supportive of Bolsonaro's candidacy and has become notorious for giving fluff interviews to members of the Bolsonaro family. And this interview he gave, even with the fluffiest of questions, only exacerbated the suspicions rather than 
alleviated them because he gave very vague and evasive answers about how it could possibly be that he has so much money, claiming, I'm a businessman. I've always been after buying and selling things like used cars. Nobody believed that explanation, including Bolsonaro's most devoted allies. At the same time that he was claiming that medical problems prevented him from responding to investigators, Flavio Bolsonaro himself, and this really escalated the scandal, went to the Supreme Court of the country and invoked a long controversial doctrine that has been used by the most corrupt political officials to shield themselves from investigation called Foro Privilegiado, which essentially means that if you're a federally elected official, you cannot be investigated or prosecuted for crimes except in the Supreme Court. And because the Supreme Court is so backlogged, it basically means that no federally elected official can ever be held accountable for crimes. And that's why this has been such a controversial doctrine. And all of the people claiming to be so opposed to corruption in Brazil, particularly the Bolsonaro family, have spent years railing against this privilege and immunity. O único prejudicado com foro privilegiado não sou eu. O prejudicado que eu não quero essa porca de foro privilegiado. Eu sou o único deputado federal prejudicado. And Flavio Bolsonaro, to block the investigation into all of this money movement, went to the Supreme Court and not only invoked the very instrument that he and his family have long railed against as immunity against corruption but did so in a very odd way because he wasn't even yet a federal senator. He hasn't been inaugurated. His argument was, even though I'm not yet a federal senator, the fact that I've been elected means I'm still entitled to this privilege. And so his effort to block the investigation by invoking this highly controversial pro-corruption weapon turned even more Bolsonaro allies against Flavio and raised the suspicions surrounding all of this corruption. What it really looked like up until that point was a very classic and old style form of corruption in Brazil, where state legislators like Flavio Bolsonaro have huge staffs, way bigger than they really need. And so they fill them with people who receive a salary in exchange for kicking back part of that salary to the elected official who appoints them. And it seemed like Fabricio was the person collecting the kickbacks and depositing them into Flavio's account. So it seemed like basic corruption, which already was a big deal given that the Bolsonaro's rode to power on an anti-corruption agenda, but it became much more serious as the amounts of money increased and it began looking like real money laundering and serious criminality. But earlier this week, this scandal took a very unexpected but dark and dangerous turn. The Rio City police executed a major operation where they apprehended and arrested five of the top members of Rio de Janeiro's most dangerous militia. Here in Rio de Janeiro and in Brazil, militias are part paramilitary forces and part mafia-like organized crime rings composed almost entirely of not just former police officers and military members, but current ones as well. They are highly dangerous and violent. They follow mafia-like patterns, but also engage in murder for hire. And what made this police operation so significant, apprehending five of the top members of this militia, is that this is the militia that houses within it something called the committee a very chilling murder unit that is known for executing the most professional murders and hits of anybody in Brazil. And because it's done by longtime police officers and members of the military, they know how to do it so that no traces are left of who the killers were. And it is this committee which was responsible for one of the most notorious acts of violence of the last decade, as you probably remember last March in 2018, city councilwoman Marielle Franco, the black LGBT anti-police abuse woman from the favelas who was elected with a huge vote total to the Rio City Council was brutally assassinated, gunned down in the streets 
of Rio de Janeiro at 7.30 at night along with her driver, and it's long been known that although the killers have not been apprehended, it's this committee within this militia that was responsible. And what makes this operation so extraordinary and has shocked the country is that they have the top five members of this militia and have discovered who the chief of this militia is, a former police officer and member of the elite police unit. And the mother and daughter of the chief of this militia, it has been discovered, has been working in Flavio Bolsonaro's cabinet for the last 10 years on his payroll. The key family members of the head of the most dangerous militia in Brazil, known to have murdered Marielle Franco, has been working, or at least on the payroll of, Flavio Bolsonaro's cabinet for the last 10 years. Beyond that, Flavio Bolsonaro himself not only officially praised the two top members of this militia, he awarded one of the most prestigious awards of service to the head of this militia. He condemned an investigative body that sent large numbers of militia members to prison as stigmatizing the police and then the military. And then when the very brave judge who was overseeing this investigation and sending militia members to prison was murdered, Flavio Bolsonaro said of her, we of course lament her death, but she went around provoking the police and the military, and this is the sort of thing that happens when you do that. So we not only now have a scandal that involves the kind of corruption Brazil has long seen, where public salaries are kicked back to the official who hires all of these people, and we not only see what looks very much like classic money laundering and evasion of all kinds of banking regulations in the form of extremely suspicious cash deposits, including into the account of President Bolsonaro's own wife, we now have extraordinarily close links between President Bolsonaro's son, just elected to the federal Senate, and the most criminal and dangerous and terrifying militia in all of Brazil, clearly linked to the assassination of city councilwoman Marielle Franco, as well as countless other people for all sorts of different reasons. And then what finally makes this scandal so remarkable is that the justice minister of President Bolsonaro's new government, Sergio Moro, rose to international fame as a warrior against corruption. Sergio Moro is the disruptor of the Brazilian judicial system. He's the man who's ended five centuries of impunity in Brazil, Latin America's largest country. He was the one who put Lula in prison in 2018 at a time when all polls showed that Lula would likely win the presidency, a conviction that was affirmed by an appellate court causing Lula to be removed from the race, which resulted in Bolsonaro's victory. Bolsonaro, after winning, turned around and made him not just the justice minister, this obscure, previously obscure judge, but a super justice minister with extreme amounts of power heralded around the world for his fight against corruption. And up until now, Sergio Moro has not said a word about any of these extraordinarily suspicious transactions, what looks like clear corruption, and what is clearly very suspicious links between the Bolsonaro family on the one hand and the most violent and criminal militias on the other. In fact, just today in Davos, where Sergio Moro is with President Bolsonaro and his other top ministers, they canceled a press conference out of fear that they would be incapable of answering questions about any of this. So you have a president who rode into office pledging to cleanse the country of the corruption that has long plagued it, who now finds himself, along with his own children and his wife, at the middle of a scandal that involves not just large amounts of suspicious money, but murder, assassination, and organized criminality as well. And that's why this scandal is so paralyzing and so engulfing of the Bolsonaro presidency.